Okay, um, now we'll do our first sample problem uh, this topic on s screw conveyors and before that I have um, already provided you the link from which you can obtain or or acquire the manufacturer's catalog that we'll be using Okay, so if you have that then I guess we can start Alright, now the problem says we are to design a horizontal screw conveyor to deliver 20 tons per hour of rough, uh, rough rice over a distance of 24 meters. Okay, so that's a horizontal screw conveyor and the capacity uh, that's in 20 tons per hour, that's the capacity in terms of, in terms of mass. And then the material is rough rice and a distance or the length of the screw would be 24 meters. The problem says we are to use a standard pitch and assume ball timer bearing and also assume class 1 for the lamp size and use motor reducer with chain drive. Okay so um, the first step to do is to obtain the necessary data. Okay, so let's say this is a solution so obtain the necessary data or necessary information okay, so take note that our material is um, it is a rough rice okay we have to okay so check materials uh, material characteristics uh, material <laughs> uh, material characteristics Table material characteristics table. Okay, so in the table you are to okay, so this is our uh, material characteristic table and we have to check for the um, rough rice. Okay, so this is the um, this is our material that's the rough rice and so the the first column here or the second column that's the weight that's actually the density that's 32 to 36 and it's given in terms of range but the material code is 34 C one half three five N. Okay, so we'll write this down. Thirty-four C one half four um, that's three five three five N. Okay, so that's that's the material code and the recommended drop loading is 30 30 a okay, so 30 a and this one is the material factor that's fm uh, which which will be using when we'll calculate the horsepower that's 0 0.6 okay so therefore the density the density would be this one so that's 34 pounds per cubic uh, cubic feet okay um, now the next step is to we have to convert this uh, required capacity to volume uh, I mean volumetric flow rate okay so We'll write it here convert the given required capacity into volumetric flow rate. Okay, volumetric flow rate. Okay, so CV required is equal to 
20 tons and that's gonna be 20,000 kilograms per hour and by the way unless otherwise um, I mentioned it that this tons is um, the the English tonnage then we'll have to assume that this is uh, metric tons okay so metric ton then that's that's 1,000 kilograms and another tons uh, that's in English is I think that's equivalent to 2,000 um, 2,000 pounds okay so um, here we'll just assume that this is metric tons unless otherwise specified okay um, 20,000 kilograms per hour and we'll have to convert that to English so that's gonna be 2.2 pounds per kilogram that's the conversion it times okay so you would notice that we'll have a unit of pound per hour and if you want a volume a volume uh, I mean a volumetric fluid then we have to multiply that to the reciprocal of the density so that's going to be 34 pounds okay. so i just write it in in this fashion or you could say divide if you want okay so that's pound and who is this a pound i mean kilograms okay kilograms that's uh that will cancel out this pound and pound so what's left is this feet cube per Hour. Okay, so if you do the math, what what you get is one thousand two hundred ninety-four feet cube per hour. Okay, so take note that in our lecture handout, there's there's all oh, there's some uh, capacity factors here. If in case we have a we have we have a let's say a, a short pitch or a different flight design. Okay, so since we have standard flights and standard pitch, then this is just 1.0. Okay, so now since we have this uh, required capacity, then we can okay, so we can now okay, go to capacity table to select. Um, screw diameter and RPM okay so take note this is our trough uh, loading that's 30 30% A so meaning non abrasive Okay, um, this is our our um, our required capacity. So therefore, if we select a capacity, uh, it should be greater than this. And for that, first we have to check uh, which drop loading. And since we we are. We are advised to go for this 30% A then you have to find this so take note this is a capacity in cubic feet per hour at maximum RPM okay so since um, our required capacity is 1294 and this one would not do this one would uh, this one would be would be the uh, selection okay so 1753 take note that's gonna be at uh, maximum rpm but since our capacity is lower than this then of course we have to uh, we have to solve for the uh, required rpm or the actual rpm 
Okay, so at this capacity, what what is our screw diameter? It says we have a 40, 14, uh, 14 inches screw diameter, and our uh, nominal pipe, uh, nominal diameter of the pipe, and that refers to the screw shaft. That's three and one half inches. Okay, so we'll write it here at thirty percent A. We have 14, 14 inches screw diameter. Okay, and it says that capacity at max N is equal to 1753. That's in feet cube, feet cube per hour. The capacity at one RPM that is twenty point sixty two. Okay, so feet cube per hour. Okay, that's per RPM. Okay, um what else? Okay, so the next step is to Okay, so solve for the actual speed okay so our equation is n is equal to cv required divided by cv that's the capacity at one rpm okay what is our required this is our required one two nine four so this is one two nine four feet cube per hour Divided by this capacity per r uh, per per RPM that is twenty point sixty two twenty point sixty two feet cube per hour all over RPM. Okay, so our unit here would be RPM. Okay, so if you do the calculation what you get is 62.75 rpm okay um, the next step is to solve for the or check the lamp size check lamp size Okay, so f for this step, um, recall that our problem says we are to assume class 1 for the lamp size. So we'll use class 1. And therefore, so for the class 1, um, Okay, so this is our class and then this is our um, screw diameter right oh, oh sorry okay uh, not that yet okay um, we'll just have to check this class one and okay so for, for this class one what is our LR our lamp ratio that is 1.75 so we have LR is equal to 1.75 inches oh no not inch sorry this is a ratio so um, this is it 1.75 now recall that in our lecture handouts we have this equation that the lump the lamp ratio LR is just equal to the radial clearance all over the maximum maximum lump okay so this is in inches and this one is in inches okay so we have this we have the lamp ratio and this one can be obtained 
from uh, the code, from the material code. Okay, so recall that we have this um, code for the size C, one half. And what it means is if you check this material classification code chart, C one half, that means that we have one half inch, um, that's the size, and under. Okay, so we'll have to use this one half inch for the maximum lump size. Okay, so this is known, the LR is known, so we are to check this radial clearance. So radial clearance is equal to LR times the maximum lump. Okay, what is this LR? That's 1.75. It's 1.75 times this one half inch or 0 0.5 inches by 1.75 times 0.5 and that's 0 0.875 inches okay so now we'll have to go to the table to check which um, which screw diameter would give this 0.875 radial clearance okay so going back um, this is our um, lump reach I mean the our material that's class 1 and you would notice that 0.875 that's actually below 1 inch okay so meaning that the radial clearance or the minimum radial clearance would be uh, equivalent to a diameter that's less than let's uh, less than six inches okay, so meaning that um, since we selected since we selected the screw diameter of 14 inch then meaning that we are safe okay so this corresponds okay corresponds to um, a screw diameter less than 6 inches therefore no need for adjustments okay so if it happens that uh, when we check this lump size and it's greater than the, um, than the first one that we to obtain then we have to redo the the calculations okay okay so now we'll have to solve so solve for the friction horsepower or HBF okay HBF is equal to L times N times the uh, diameter factor and times the bearing factor all over 1 million 1 times 10 to the 6 okay what is our length it is 24 meters so 24 meters times 3.28 feet per meter times the um, speed which is this one 62 that's uh, 62.75 Okay, so 62.75 RPM. What is FD? So the diameter factor, we can obtain that from the table. That's in page 20. Okay, so say this 
page 20 and then this one page 19 okay so for the diameter factor since our diameter is 14 inches then we have a diameter factor of 78 so times 78 times the bearing factor that's in page 19 and this bearing factor is okay so since the problem says we're to assume a ball bearing type and that's 1.0 all over 1 times 10 to the 6 Okay, so 24, 24 times 3.28 times 62.75 times 78 divided by, okay, that is 0 0.385, okay, 0 0.385 uh, HP. Okay, so now the next step is to solve for the material HP material HP is just equal to the CV required okay see so that's the C that's the capacity required capacity times the density times the length and then we have three factors here the flight factor the material factor fn and the paddle factor Pull over one times 10 to the uh, to the six okay what is this cv uh, that's 1294 feet cube per hour and our density is 34 pounds per feet cube and our length is that's 24 times 3.28 uh, feet okay times the factor okay uh, for the flight factor since we have a standard flight and standard pitch uh, that's just 1.0 this um, f sub p or pedal factor that's also equal to 1.0 since we don't have pedals here this one the material factor that's that's given in the material code which is equal to 0 0.6 okay so times 0 0.6 all over 1 times 10 to the 6 so 1294 times 34 times 78 points 72 times 0.6 divided by 1 million so 2 point um, that's 2.078 horsepower now if we check the units um, I guess this makes sense because we have okay this cancels out we have a pound foot per hour that's the unit of energy pound foot per hour okay so I guess this one makes sense uh, I mean the material horsepower uh, you can derive the unit of power here Okay, so energy divided by time, that's power. Okay, so I guess uh, it makes sense. Okay, next step is to solve for total HP. Okay, so HP total is just equal to HP, uh, uh, the friction horsepower plus the material horsepower times some overload factor divided by this um, drive efficiency 
Okay, um, we have to check this. There's a provision in the catalog that we have to check this. The addition, uh, I mean, if you add the friction of power and material of power, and if it's greater than 5, uh, 5 point something, then you use use fo is equal to 1.0 okay so let's do this first let's do the the sum of this friction horsepower okay so hpf that's 0 0.385 plus 2.078 that's equal to 2.078 plus 0.385 that's 2.463 so this equal to 2.463 okay now we'll go to um, the figure or the graph that's in page 21 okay, page 21 and this is it you see it? you can see here that there's um, along the horizontal axis that's the horsepower the friction plus the material force power and on the vertical or on the y-axis that's the uh, factor overload factor f sub o okay so since we did calculate this value that's 2.463 okay so let's say that's gonna be 2.5 okay so we have we so from this point we go upward and from this intersection we go to the left okay so let's just say that's around 1.45 okay, so therefore fo is equal to 1.45 okay, so what about this e our e the problem says We are to use water reducer with chain drive. Okay, so we have to to go to page twenty. Okay, so this is page twenty. And what you get is this one. Okay, so water reducer with chain drive, and that's zero point eighty five. 0.85 okay so now let's substitute all the values so HP total is equal to uh, 2.463 times the overload factor by the way this is horsepower times the overload factor of um, 1.45 Okay, divided by the drive efficiency of 0 0.85 and we get okay, 2.463 times 1.45 divided by 0.85 so we get 4.2 HP okay so that's the required and um, if there's no electric water size that's 4.5 Probably the next one is 5 HP. I don't know. Okay, so let's just say 5 HP. Okay, so after you did everything, I mean, you did the calculations, the next step in the design is to prepare a joint. Okay, so this is our um, screw. So our pitch, uh, first of all, I think we should draw our center lines, then here, 
course we have to apply what we studied or what we learned in our drafting course okay so this one is our diameter so diameter is uh, screw diameter is 14 it says we have four I think that's 14 inch inches okay, 14 inches and our pitch is also 14 inches okay and what else our uh, speed so n is equal to 62.75 so let's just say 63 rpm okay what else and our length of 20 24 meters okay so so far um, that's all the the detail the details that we need or we can just make a summary okay so screw diameter is 14 inch um, the pitch is equal to 14 inches then speed is 63 rpm l is 24 meters capacity I guess no need for the capacity okay so um, I did I mean in your homework I need to have a summary something like this but I uh, also would like you to present a somehow like a complete drawing um, just to practice our drawing skills like for example just to present a three three-dimensional uh, sketch of our For screw conveyor okay so we need to draw the pairings and stuff like that and to break out section okay so something like that and then label for example what is this um, uh, steel for example uh, this one is steel I guess 3 mm thick okay, or mild steel then for example this one would be the cold rolled steel and we had I guess we had uh, three inches no that's the cold rolled steel that's a three inches pipe Diameter pipe, and we can just write schedule 40 or whatever. Okay, and just label the details. It's a shaft, screw. Okay, so that's all that um, that I need in the homework. Okay, uh, I guess I don't have much time. Um, I will continue this recap in the next video.